Hey there, this is uh, Christian from Spitfire Audio. Uh, I'm here in Baker Street uh, today recording some Byron beats for Albion 2 Logier. And we're here at uh, Aerodale Studios, which is a, a curious little place which I've grown very, very fond of over many, many years of working here. Um, I'll take you around, show you what this place has got to offer and uh, how we're approaching recording these interesting patterns, loops and samples. So the really interesting feature of uh, Aerodale is this Kadak desk. It was the um, last one, one that was ever built, I believe, um, in the early 1980s. It's fantastic. Got some curious little automation. They've got some great vintage kit. These uh, lovely Neve compressors. What's great about this studio, it's in the heart of the West End. And there's very few, few studios left in London. Good Pro Tools rig. We'll be setting up the tape later. Very tasty. Nice tape delay there. All these tape facilities. And they've got this fantastic mic cupboard. Got loads of great stuff in. There's an old uh, U47 there. Lots of 87s. But most of them are out because what is really good about this studio is the live space. Well, our recordings today is very kind of old school. Percussion here. Double bass there. Me playing the piano for my sins. And we've got drums, fantastic Ralph Salmons and drums. Playing a really old retro kind of kit. Have a look at some of the mics that we're using. My favourite mics in the world are these um, Coles. They're called Coles because they're invented by a bloke called Colin and a bloke called Les working for the BBC. And they're a brilliant ribbon mic. I'd always recommend using those as overheads. Some fantastic vintage 87s, the industry standard 57. Notice also that they're using a Coles on the, the hi hat. And we'll have to ask Nick what this is round here. I don't know what that is. It looks old as well. Dusty. Lovely selection of stuff there. This is one of the best sounding um, smaller grand pianos um, in London. I think they're using Sherps mics on that. And um, what's this microphone here, Nick? That's uh, Valve U47. Valve U47 for the wonderful bass. Shoes, because I tap my feet too loudly when I'm playing, badly. Some more 87s and Sherps there. Paul Clarvis on percussion. It's an amazing lineup today. We've got um, the fantastic Mitch on guitar. Both miking and going live into a Fender Champ there. And then this one, mate, this is a, I should know. That's, that's another Valve 47. That's a 47. Uh, and this wonderful. And then we've got an AKG C12. C12, which if you have a look at the serial number, number 1113. So quite an early one. Do you know what uh, kind of date? I think they're um, very early 60s, possibly. Very early 60s. Possibly the... One of the 57s is maybe even late 50s. Wow. And how much is this C12 worth, do you think? Five or six grand, I would think. That's, that's, that's in pounds, sterling, lots. They've got a little toy out here that they never use that I absolutely love because it's really saucy looking. If I wasn't an honest man, I would steal it. Look at that. Look at it. Is that a quarter inch, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, one C12 is going for £3,779 and another for 6600 So Very nice. They seem to vary. <laughs> this is the, the our amazing fixer Dom. Fixes all of the Spitfire stuff. Puts together these amazing bands. We've got an amazing band today playing really quirky 
stuff that I think that you guys are going to find really useful. I think will actually um, be really useful for kind of hip hop as well, a real kind of variety of, of, of uses. Um, I do a lot of mixing of my films here. It's a great uh, LCR, LS, RS, or the other way around. A big sub down there somewhere. Um, and this fantastic Kallak desk. There's been a real variety of um, things recorded him here from. Um, one of my favourite scores of all time, actually, Proposition, was 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 um, recorded and mixed here. This score was recorded here. Absolutely brilliant score, that one. Absolutely top class rom com material. <coughs> Stuff like uh, Lion King, Full Monty was done here. Harry Brown more recently. Soloist. Things like Atonement, Miss Potter. Awesome film. Um, Michael, Rise of the Planet Apes was mixed here. So it's a real gem of a, of a place. Absolutely love this place. Anyway, I need to get back to the keyboard. So um, we've had some good days down at Aerodale and um, we've moved now up to a fantastic studio in West London called um, Sofa Sound which is Hugh Padgham's um, place. Um, so I'll give you a quick show around and uh, we'll meet Gertz, who's the engineer who'll be mixing the bar and beats and talking about how we're going to get that retro sound. Just uh, walking in here. Let's see. Uh, are these Grammys? I think they are. Yeah, these are Grammys, aren't they? Fantastic. So we've got a lovely live room here. Um, my favourite mics, as always. And here's the control room, which is where we're going to be mixing these beats. This is Gertz. Mixes a lot of my films. And he's going to be mixing the bar and beats today. We're going to be using an array of different um, vintage stuff to get that sound. Notice we've got the tape all loaded up. I think we're going to use a very slow tape speed. <coughs> Cream of the crop is uh, this little bad boy, which I bought in a rock and roll memorabilia auction. And it, um, it was used by and belonged to Jimi Hendrix. And uh, we're just rigging that up now. We switch it on in a minute. And uh, I've used this on several films to get that kind of 60s sound because that's the decade it was made. So it'll be interesting to see if this can help us get the kind of desired retro sound that we want. It's funny, when I bought this uh, box, look at that lovely light. Oh. Yeah, when I bought this box, um, I went up to the auctioneers and asked them if it worked and they kind of stared at me. Um, as if I was crazy because it was actually in a glass box so I didn't know until I got it back to my studio whether it worked or not and I believe it's still got the original valves in it so let's see what Jimmy's box can do to our bar and beats so we're back now in my studio which is currently in a um, temporary location uh, just a little look around there this stuff. Avid, naughty boys. Um, got some nice um, outboard down here. Can you see that? Got about, I don't know, half of my stuff out at the moment. Um, take you around and have a look at a couple of my synths and stuff. One sec. So, yeah, I've got some vintage stuff going on here. None of it's rigged up at the moment because, as I say, just in a temporary location. This is Stanley. Oh, yeah. Fantastic Stanley Gabriel, who assists me and is helping a lot on uh, Spitfire. And that's Sam, who's another composer. <laughs> so this is the the gaff. So anyway, we've got, got everything back and um, I'm delighted uh, with how it sounds. Um, uh, Gertz has actually done uh, nice train 
track tap there. It's great for um, great kind of added locomotive ambience in the background. What's happening is I'm actually having a, a studio built over the road, which I'll take you guys around once it's done. But anyway, I'm just going to finish off say that we're delighted with uh, how everything has turned out, and Gertz has provided us with um, a half inch uh, stereo, half inch mono, the Hendrix. Uh, Amp, which on some of the loops sounds absolutely brilliant, on some of them sounds quite trashy. And then we've got direct out of the SSL, both in stereo and a fold, uh, fold down in mono. Um, we're going to try some experiments with some vinyl stuff. We're not actually going to press to, to uh, uh, vinyl, um, but we're going to try um, some vinyl plugins to have a, 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 a sixth uh, version of the bar and beats that you can use, um, uh, which will have a vinyl kind of effect on. Uh, the SSL stuff is quite interesting because it's a, a lot more kind of full bandwidth, but it still has that quite vintage sound because Gertz really um, made use of um, all that kind of outboard stuff that you saw yesterday. So thanks for bearing with me for the, the last nerdy few minutes. Um, I hope this has been of interest to kind of go behind the scenes of us working at Spitfire. Um, we'll do some more of these when, as and when it's kind of this stuff that's interesting enough to film. Obviously the Loads of editing we've got to do now on bar and beats wouldn't be particularly interesting to, to talk about. Um, do check back about uh, Albion 2 and other products that are due for release very soon at www.spitfireaudio.com. Uh, we also really uh, love and support the guys at vi-control.net, some fantastic resource for um, virtual instruments. And um, thanks for watching. And yes, I think I'm going to have that shave and keep it to sleep. <laughs>